Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shakras, and today I'm going to be taking a look at my two practice pianos like I said I would in another video and I'm going to be comparing the sounds of them as well as a few other aspects about these instruments. Now before I get started with that I wanted to just talk a little bit about these keyboards and why I own them, these particular keyboards in particular and kind of my thoughts about using keyboards as practice instruments. Now if you go out into the world today and you're looking for a keyboard, you can buy some super cheap ones at a thrift store for like $15 and you can buy some at um, really nice piano stores that can go all the way up to $15,000, I kid you not. So there's a wide range of keyboard options out there on the market and a lot of people do like these really, really expensive keyboards. They're known as hybrid pianos because they, are a dig they ha have digital sounds, but they have a mechanical action inside just like a piano. It's modified a little bit, but it's made to feel as close to a real piano as possible, and they do come pretty close. But the issue with buying a $10,000 or a $15,000 keyboard, and I'm just going to call them keyboards because they are digital. The issue with buying one of those is in the next two years, five years, ten, whenever the company decides to roll out a new version of that or a new model that is better than the old one that you purchased, then yours is going to be out of date and you paid ten thousand dollars for it and then you're probably going to want to buy a new one because the new one's going to have new features, probably new sounds, new just new features in general, a new appearance, all that stuff. And if you want to stay up to date, it's a very, very expensive game to play. However, with these, the, both of these keyboards I purchased for under $2,000 and both of them are still running strong. So if one of them fails, both of these are, I believe, outdated models. I know the MP11 is. I don't believe the SV1 is still made anymore. I don't ever see it in stores anymore. So if I wanted to upgrade one of these to something new, something new by Korg, the newer MP11, um, I wouldn't have to pay $10,000 to do so. I'd only have to pay around uh, a little over $1,000, maybe two somewhere around that range. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention that the reason I have these keyboards is because they're relatively cheap to replace. So if, for example, something fell and broke one of the keys on here or on this one, I can easily get a new one for around a thousand dollars and you can find these used on eBay for around six to eight or five hundred, somewhere around there. So these are actually pretty affordable by now since you can buy them used. They may have problems. I have no idea about that. But if you're lucky and you get a used one that's in good shape and it works great, for you know eight to a thousand eight hundred to a thousand dollars well you're doing really great so that's just one thing I wanted to mention and also if you have a real piano and you practice on it every single day for many hours a day as most pianists will you're gonna be putting wear and tear on the piano you're gonna be making grooves and the hammers they're gonna start getting harder and the action over time is going to fall out of regulation and it's going to start feeling all wonky so after some time you're gonna be wanting to do repairs on the piano and that can get really pricey. I think a whole action rebuild can be, from certain people, $7,000. So that's a lot of money. And so here in the studio, we don't want to have to be doing that constantly over and over again every six months or so, or an action wouldn't need complete replacing after six months, but you know what I mean. We don't want to have to be doing that every few years to keep the pianos in shape. So what these instruments are doing is help keeping is helping keep time off of the pianos at the studio so that they still sound good for many, many years to come. And in the meantime, if one of these fails, you just you know give someone a thousand dollars or a little bit more than that, and you get a whole brand new keyboard. So I just wanted to talk about that and why I have these two particular keyboards and the advantages to buying a relatively inexpensive keyboard, although for stage pianos, these are pretty high-end models. I do know that there are some by other manufacturers that are a bit more expensive and probably a little bit cooler to some, but I like both of these a lot. So now one further thing I wanted to mention before I get into the actual review is that what I have done here is I have set the level on the amp to be the exact same. It does have a small mixer on it, but all of the little knobs there are set to unity. And so the amp behind me is a KC350 by Roland. It's quite a nice amp. And basically the volumes on there are set to the exact same. And then I tweaked the keyboard volumes to be roughly about the same. It's a little bit tricky to get them to the exact same because they have a slightly different uh, timbre. So one sometimes sounds a little bit louder than the other, but I did my best to make them sound exactly the same volume. So the volume on the Kawhi is all maxed out and I have the, the sliders on the other two uh, categories maxed out as well because when I get to those, I want those loud. So the Kawhi is maxed all the way out and then the uh, SV1 still has a little bit ways to go. It's probably about 80% of the volume. So if you're curious, the SV1 appears to have a little bit more headroom than the Kawhi, if that's something that you really need. 
But now let me get into the uh, review of these two instruments. And I'm going to start off with kind of like the visual appearance of them as well as the build quality. Now, if you've seen my video where I reviewed the MP11, some of this is going to be the same. So it might be a little bit boring, and I'm sorry about that. But what I wanted to do first is talk about the build quality of both of these. And honestly, they're both pretty good. The MP11, though, I think just kind of has a more quality feel to it. It's heavier than the SV1. This thing probably weighs about like 60 or 70 pounds. It's really, really heavy. And the build quality on it is absolutely excellent. We have these really nice wood. I believe they're wood anyway. They have a wood grain to them, and they kind of feel warm-ish, kind of like wood does. Wood doesn't get cold like metal does, or like plastic will. This is, I believe, plastic, and it's a little colder than this. So this, these, I believe, are wood, and they have a very nice feel to them, and also a very nice look. And they just, it's quality to put wood on an instrument like this. And then you also have a metal front here. And on a piano, this would be called the key slip, but it's not really a key slip on here, so I'm just going to call it the front. This is a metal, and it's pretty thick, and it feels very durable. There's hardly any flex to it at all, and it just feels very well made. The top here is also metal, again, a very thick metal. It feels very durable. There's no flex or anything up on top of it, and it just has a very, very quality feel. And again, when you go to move it, you can really feel that it's a very heavy instrument. It also has a bit of a different look than the SV-1. The SV-1 is very curved, and from the back, it reminds me of like a really elongated like pill or something because it's round on the ends and then straight in the middle. It's kind of weird. But the uh, the MP11 has a bit of a more traditional shape. It's very flat on top and kind of straight in the back and straight in the front. So it's a little bit more traditional. But those are the two looks of the instruments. So that's kind of cool. The SV1, I know you were able to get like a whole bunch of wacky colors on it. I think some of them are limited edition. I've seen some that have like red on the ends and then the keys are like the white keys are black and the black keys are red and it's really strange looking. I think that was like a special anniversary model. They only made like 500 of them or something. But the SV1 came in a bunch of different colors. The MP11 only comes in the color that you see here, I believe, the black and the little um, dark brown trim pieces. So the SV1 comes in different colors, if that's interesting to you. But one thing that I wanted to mention is the um, the interface. The Korg is pretty famous for using a screenless interface, which in these days is probably... W where else do you see this on a modern device? other than the Korg SV-1. What else made today doesn't have a screen on it? But that's what the Korg SV-1 was famous for. It's kind of uh, harkening back to the days when nothing really had a screen. For example, say, like an older, older synthesizers or the Rhodes instrument or really anything back in the 70s really didn't have a screen on it uh, that I know of. So that's kind of what the uh, SV-1 is trying to emulate. And the user interface on it is very, very simple. And once you really get a, a, a feel for where all the knobs are, Changing things and changing sounds becomes absolutely effortless. It's very easy to remember what sounds are on um, what knobs. So if like, oh, you want this certain sound, just go here and go to there and voila. You have that sound that you always wanted. So it's very, very easy to um, get the right sounds that you want. And once you get a feel for where everything is laid out, it becomes very, very easy to do. And I really enjoy the layout of the Korg SV-1. One small gripe I have is that these buttons here that um, or over here, let me put it on here because that's where that activates. They're not very good. They don't always trigger. You have to hit them just right. I'm pushing that. And if I hit it too fast, see that light staying on? That means it's not activating. If I hit it slower and in the center, it's going off. But if you hit it fast, it doesn't it doesn't go, which is kind of weird because if you're in the middle of playing something and you want that to be on, you don't want to have to take the time to go, let me make sure I push that button. Okay, good, it's off. Let me keep playing. You don't have the time to do that. You're just going to go bam and hit it. And on this instrument, you can't do that. So that's one thing I wanted to mention that these small buttons here aren't great. These ones also have the same issue. You, If you hit them quickly, they don't work. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention. The buttons on here are a little bit weird. The buttons on the Kawai are very, sens uh, very sensitive, as you can see, this one here, as well as all of them. If you hit them quickly, or if you hit them slower, they work just fine. I want that on because that's enabling the sounds to come through. But the buttons on here are a bit more sensitive. However, the layout overall on the MP11, I dislike a little bit more. It does have a screen, as you can see, but it's very primitive. It's very pixelated. It's very small. It's kind of hard to see. And also just the way the menus are, are laid out is just kind of annoying and hard to navigate. And it's not as intuitive by any means as the Korg. There's a number of small little gripes that I have with it. I'm not going to go into them today, but probably my biggest one is that these knobs here that you use to edit the values on the keyboard, they have manual stops. You can only turn them so far to the left and so far to the right, and then they stop. And that's very annoying. Uh, I don't know why they decided to go with that. And I don't even know why these knobs are so small. I would have appreciated a bigger knob so you can really fine tune that in. 
But the fact that these knobs have uh, manual stops on them makes it so that you constantly have to like, keep going back and forth to get the knob to trigger to the, the display on screen and make it register. And it's kind of annoying. But overall, it works pretty well. But I do prefer the user interface on the Korg SV1 to the one on the Kawaii MP11. Now, on the topics of build quality, I also wanted to mention a couple other things. First of all, the music desk for the MP11, which is in its box, and it doesn't really fit under here because it's kind of useless anyway with this other one on top. The music desk for the MP11 is really solidly built. It's made of metal. It's got like metal uh, beams over the top, like metal bracing on the top, and then it has little sheets of metal in the middle to hold your music desk, your music in place, and it's a very well-built music desk. The music desk for the SV1 is pretty flimsy. It's like a little piece of plastic. I don't know if it's... Here it is. Let me go get it real quick. This is the music desk for the Korg. It's plastic. It's kind of flimsy and frail. And when you're playing the instrument, it does kind of flap around. But it does slide nicely into spot into place back here. There's two little uh, ports where it just kind of friction fit slides in, and it's very very. It goes in very nicely. But the music desk is kind of flimsy, and I like the music desk on the MP11 better. It's constructed much better. Let me put this away. I also went ahead and found and grabbed the music desk for the Kawhi MP11. As you can see here, it's a much different construction. This is all metal. There's no plastic whatsoever on here. Hear that? That's a lovely sound of metal. So this is a much, much better constructed music desk. However, with both of these, they're very short. And I don't know why this is so common on pianos, keyboards, pretty much everything. But the music desks, as you can see, are really short. And the maximum you can fit on here is three pages and I don't know why keyboard manufacturers don't have music desks that stretch the entire length of the instrument. If they wanted to, they could even make a little bit extra money by having the default one be this big and then have two extra ones that you can buy extra and just kind of fit on there and then you can fit like seven pieces of music on there. I don't know why they don't make a full length music desk, but no one does. So that kind of annoys me. But Having said that, the build quality on the MP11 music desk is much better than the Korg. So if that's what you want, you want a really sturdy music desk, the MP11 has a very sturdy music desk. I'm going to go put this away now. So this is the pedal unit for the Kawaii. It says Kawaii F30 on top. And the only thing I dislike about this pedal is the annoying little stickers on top. It says this one's not even straight. But if I wanted to, I could peel that off. The fact the biggest thing I dislike about this pedal is a sticker that's removable is saying a lot because this is an amazing, amazing pedal. And aside from the little sticker, there's nothing I dislike about it. First of all, you're probably noticing these look funny. These are little protective coverings that I left on because they came with it. And I do want to keep it nice. But just for the sake of the review, I'll take them off so you can see it in all of its glory. This is an amazing pedal. It weighs a lot. It weighs about three pounds. And as you can see, you have three pedals here that do the same like on a real piano. And it's just an amazing pedal. The top of it is made of really high quality plastic. It feels durable. It feels like I could throw it across the room and it would be totally fine. I'm not going to do that, but I think it would be totally fine. It might not even get scratched up if you had carpet. I have no idea. The underside of it is even more amazing because we have a giant sheet of metal. What other pedal have you seen that has a giant sheet of metal underneath of it that adds to the weight and adds to the quality of the instrument? Another thing I love is these giant rubber feet. Hopefully you can see just how huge these are. And these things make it so that if you put this thing on carpet, you can kick it like a soccer ball and it's not going to move. It sticks to the floor. Most other keyboard pedals do not stick like this. They wander all over the place and they just go skittering across the floor like some kind of a weird insect and you're trying to crush it with your foot. And at the end of the performance, your foot's going to be all the way out and you're going to be hitting it with your toe because it's wandered across the room. This will not do that. This does not wander. It does not move. On some surfaces, it will kind of skid around a tiny bit, but on carpet, it sticks like glue, and it's absolutely amazing. So needless to say, I love the build quality of this pedal, and it's absolutely amazing. And just to show how much Kawhi went into the little tiny touches of this, if we take a look down here at the very long cable, you'll see that the even the ends down here are really nice. They're made of metal. It looks like some kind of gold on the ends. And then there's even like a little spring down here to help protect the joint where it goes into the instrument because that's kind of a weak spot, those connection points. So it has a little spring here to help shroud that little connection and to help keep it from bending sharply and breaking. So Kawhi went into all little details about making the F30 pedal great. But let's see what Korg did. It's a bit disappointing. This is the Korg pedal. It weighs half a pound, and this is all you get. Now, I'm not upset that it's only one pedal, because honestly, I was, I'm very happy that the Kawaii came with three, but the fact that this only comes with one isn't really that big of a deal breaker. What is the deal breaker is just the build quality of it. 
It's like made of really cheap plastic. It says stamped on the underside of it, made in China. So that's great. This the Kawaii pedal maybe is, but even if it is, it's still a much higher quality pedal than the Cork pedal. I have no idea what this big like groove down here is for. I assume that there was like some kind of a custom stand for the SV1 you could buy and that this would fit on top of something on the bottom and keep it from sliding around. Or they just cut that out to save weight. It's probably that one. Um, then there's a little cable on the back. There's like a weird screw on the back. And then if we take a look at the, the end here, you'll see that it's a pretty standard end. Nothing special going on down here at all. But my biggest complaint with the Korg pedal is you saw the big giant rubber feet that were on the underside of the MP11 pedal. This one just has these little foam bumpers. I remember as a kid, I had a toy that would shoot these little discs and they're made of the same exact foam. So the fact that this foam feels like a kid's toy isn't really that great of a thing. And these things, these don't stick to anything. These don't stick to carpet, they don't stick to wood. Well, nothing really does. The MP11 slides around a little bit on wood. But these just kind of go all over the place and they're terrible. Even if you put one of these under it, which is like, you know, that sticky like rubber sheets, you can buy them at Walmart for a couple of bucks and they, like, they're like counter liners and stuff. Even if you put one of these underneath of it, it still will slide around on carpet. So I don't really know what the big fix of it, I guess, would be taking these off and putting sticky Velcro on down here. And that would stick it to the carpet. Actually, I don't know why no one's ever done that before. That would be a really great idea. But... The fact that this is just so cheap and chintzy is really a bit of a letdown. I know that the SV1 was a cheaper keyboard than the MP11. The SV1 was around 2, the MP11 was closer to 3, but this pedal is really disappointing. So I just wanted to talk about that and how disappointing this pedal was. And uh, I'm not upset that it only has one uh, pedal, but just the overall build quality of it. And I think at one point I was having squeaking issues with it too. I think I fixed that somehow, but uh, yeah. So this is the Korg pedal. It's a bit disappointing, and I really, really love the pedal on the Kawaii. Much nicer. So now that you've seen some of the physical differences between the MP11 and the Korg, as well as some of the visual differences, now let me show you some of the audible differences between the MP11 uh, by Kawaii and the SV1 by Korg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the same pieces that I always play on acoustic pianos, which is my original test piece that I wrote to test out pianos, and then also a my favorite Bach hymn that I have learned so far. I really enjoy the sound of it. Everyone else seems to as well, so I'm going to be playing that on the MP11. But what I'm going to be doing differently is immediately after playing each piece, I'm going to play it on the other keyboards. I'm going to start off with the MP11, play my test piece, then do it on the Korg, and the same for the Bach hymn to kind of give you an idea of the contrast of the different sounds of the instruments. So hopefully you guys enjoy. As you can hear, the MP11 as well as the Korg SV1 have a slightly different sound, and it's it's kind of interesting because it kind of varies a little bit in the bass versus the mid-range versus the treble why they are different, but let me now play the Bach piece, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the sounds and the differences between these two instruments.
One thing I really like about playing that Bach piece on piano is it really seems to bring out the warm characteristics of the piano. And it doesn't do that so much on the MP11 because the sound of the MP11 is a little bit brighter and a little bit colder than that of the Korg. But when I played on the Korg, you can really hear, at least I can in person, and hopefully it's coming through on the recording, that the Korg has a slightly warmer sound. If I play, let's just do a G major chord because that's what that Bach piece was in. If I play a G major chord here on the Korg and play the same one on the MP11, you'll hear it's a little bit brighter. Let me do that a couple more times so you can hear the difference. that the Korg has a bit of a warmer, more mellow, a more round sound, which I kind of prefer. But what's cool about the Kawai is you have a brilliance knob right here and you can turn that down. I'm going to turn it down to 10 and now let's hear the difference. Now they sound pretty much about the same, so that's kind of cool that the Kawai has a bit more, you, the Kawai has a bit more control over the sound than you do with the Korg. You do have some effects, you do have some amp simulators, and you do have some reverb, but you have more control over it uh, with the MP11 than you do on the Korg, which I kind of like. So let me put the brilliance back to zero, which is where it defaults to. I just wanted to show you that the default sound of both of these is a little bit different. And another way that the default sound on these is a bit different is in the bass register. I really like the sound of the bass register on the Kawai. It sounds more like a real piano, or at least a more a, a real concert grand. Of course, it's lacking a bit because it's a recording of a concert grand that's coming through a speaker and now being recorded and played back on YouTube. But if I play the same thing on the uh, SV1 here, sounds like a smaller piano, it sounds kind of stuffy and just not quite as good. It sounds more like a baby grand that's kind of been used a lot or something like that. This one sounds like more like a new concert grand. It has more life to it. The bass end on this is not as good. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention, that they do have a bit of a different sound. And one thing that I thought I heard, and I want to check now, is that I think that there's more sustain on the MP11 than on the Korg. So let me just try, let's do another G major chord. I like G major. Let's try this. Probably should have been counting the seconds there. Maybe some of you guys did. Now let me play the same chord on the Kawhi and see how long it lasts. See, it seems to me that the Kawai has more sustain than the SV-1. Now let's do the real test, which is the 6th octave, which in many pianos, the 6th octave can be troublesome and you will often get a lack of sustain. So here's the sustain that they programmed into the MP-11. I probably shouldn't have had that with the pedal down. Let me try that again. Pretty good. If that was a real piano, I'd say that was absolutely amazing sustain. Here it is on the Korg. nowhere near as long. So as you can see, the Korg definitely does have less sustain than on the MP11. Is that a huge deal? Mm, probably not, but I just wanted to mention that, that the Korg does have less sustain on, it seems that all the sounds, because on the road sound on here, which we'll get to in a little bit, there's also less sustain on the Korg than on the MP11. So now that we have both of these instruments on the road sound, I want to talk a little bit about something strange about both of these instruments, and then I'm going to be playing a very famous piece that was written for the Rhodes back in the 1970s, and it's an absolutely fantastic piece. But the strange thing I wanted to mention about both of these keyboards, well, it's kind of a little bit different for both of them, but the first thing I wanted to mention is that the Korg SV-1 has a little bit of a strange bug. I can't imagine it's a feature. It has to be a bug. That the sounds between different categories are radically different. Well, maybe not radically, but they are considerably different. So for example, like I said earlier in the video, I have the volume on the MP11 maxed out, and I have both of these instruments going into the amp at the same volume, and then I tweak the other instrument to match the volume of the MP11. So this is all maxed out. I didn't change anything here, and it's about the same volume that I want it to be about the same volume as the piano that we had before. But now on the SV-1, when I went to the road sound, it was much louder. And so before when I had this on the piano sound, I had the, the master volume knob turned to about eight. Now it's down to about six. 
So there's a pretty big difference there between the Rhodes sound on the uh, SV-1 and the piano sound on the SV-1. The piano sound is, I believe, the quietest category of sounds on the instrument, and the organ category is the loudest category. It's very, very loud, and I always find myself turning the instrument way down when I get to the organ sounds, and many times I've been like, oh, I want organ, and I just hit a big chord and then scared myself because it was way louder than I expected. I kid you not, that has happened a few times. But on the note of the organ, the MP11 has no organ sounds whatsoever, and what's very strange is in the uh, in the effects there is a rotary speaker sound. They're like it gives the effect sort of of a rotary speaker, but there are no organ sounds. There's no pipe organ. There's no Hammond organ. There's no combo organ. There's no organ of any kind on the MP11. So if you're looking for a stage piano that has organ sounds, unfortunately, as good as the MP11 is, it's simply not the instrument for you. The Korg SV1 would be a better option, although there are even better um, imitations of real organs out there. The organ sounds in here are okay. They kind of have their own different sound. They're sort of meant to sound like a Hammond, but they really don't. But they are kind of fun to play around with, with recordings and things like that. I have used them a lot. But now that I have a Hammond B3, and now that I have a 1965 Vox Continental combo organ, I find myself using the organ sounds on here much less. But now let me go ahead and play a little excerpt of Riders on the Storm by The Doors on the MP11 and then immediately afterwards the, the SV1 just to give you guys an idea of how the instrument on the road sound sounds. As you can probably hear, the Kawaii MP11 and the Korg SV1 have a much different interpretation of what the Rhodes is, and part of that is something interesting about the Korg. The Korg comes with six different amp models, so these are kind of meant to sort of imitate the sound of taking your instrument and plugging it into some random vintage amp. They're not labeled. The only one that's labeled is organ amp. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. Is it supposed to be like a Hammond tone cabinet or something? Uh, maybe a... I don't know what that's supposed to be. But the other ones are just generically labeled Amp 1, Amp 2, Amp 3, 4, and 5, and then you have Organ Amp. But it defaults to be on, and what the organ, what the amp sounds do is they kind of add a bit more grit. You also have a drive knob here that you can change to give it some overdrive sound, which is kind of cool. But this defaults to being on, which I find kind of strange. And if I turn that off, you'll hear a big difference in sound. Before I do that, I just want to talk about the default sounds of the roads on here and the roads on here. So what I'm finding is that the default sound on the MP11 to me sounds a bit more like the Rhodes than the default sound on the SV1 because the bass I think is a bit fatter on here. And that sounds more like the real Rhodes sound bass. Now 
in the future, I'm going to be getting a really cool uh, Mint Rhodes into the studio. It's from 1973, and it's a suitcase model, which is kind of like the model that everyone wants. It has the speaker cabinet underneath, and it also has a really nice vibrato sound. So when I get that into the studio, I'm going to be doing another comparison, a three-way comparison, only on the Rhodes sound of these, and comparing the sound of the MP11, the Korg, and the vintage Rhodes to each other, and that's going to be a very interesting comparison. So then we'll see how close the MP11 really comes to that vintage Rhodes sound. But for a keyboard, a digital keyboard, I think it comes pretty dang close. The uh, Rhodes has kind of like this characteristic wobble sound in the bass that the MP11 doesn't quite capture. kind of even a lot of the times with the roads when you hit the low basements they kind of wobble and they kind of shake a little bit it's kind of interesting sound and it sounds really cool and uh, the mp11 doesn't quite do that but i think the tone of the instrument down in that register is in the right spot the rest of the instrument sounds really fantastic and i really like the treble on here it really sounds a lot like the roads which is bright it's piercing and it has a lot of sustain let me play this high b up here and you'll hear it goes on and on and on and on, just never dies out, just like the real Rhodes does, and all these notes up here are like that. I find that in this register, they seem to get a little bit quiet, so they're loud down here, they're quiet right around here, and then they get louder again. Watch this. Whoops, I messed up there. See how they're really bright up here? That's probably peaking my recorders, but then right down here, I'm going to hit all these at the same volume. They're really dull right in here. And they get a little tiny bit brighter down here again. Those are all the same volume, but these ones up here are extra bright, and these ones down here are a little bit too dull. So that's kind of interesting, and I don't think my real roads is like that. But that's just something interesting I noticed about that. Now, as I said, the amp model up here has a much different sound than the one down here. If you listen to just the kind of the sound of it. <laughs> Here, it's a lot different. There's also reverb on here, which if I turn off, it sounds super dry, and if I leave on, it sounds a little bit too much. So I'm just, I guess I'll just leave it on. This has a tiny bit of reverb. A very tiny bit, I think. Actually, maybe it doesn't. I guess it didn't. So I'll turn this on. Or turn this off. I'll turn this off. There we go. So as you can hear, it has a different sound. And the bass on this is much different with the amp sim on than this. This is way fatter, more, way more round. This is more thin and kind of, I don't know, high-pitched, reedy. And you can hear that it's a lot different. And I've never heard a Rhodes that actually sounds like this. It's very strange. And I don't know what these amps are supposed to be, but if I turn that off, then it gets a lot closer to this. more round a little bit more like this it still kind of has its own unique sound but if I turn that amp back on and back off here it alters the sound a lot I'm not sure what this amp is really supposed to be imitating but I don't think it's supposed to be imitating the sound of the Rhodes amp because uh, you know the speaker cabinet that the suitcase model sits on top of because I don't think it sounds like that but what is kind of cool is you do have a drive knob up here, and the MP11 does have this, but it's a little bit uh, not quite as nice. Because you get this really cool drive sound, so if you don't have an amp that does drive, you can have the uh, SV1 do it, and then you can also put the Vox Wah on. <laughs> Which sounds really funky and really cool, and I love messing around with that sound. But the sound of the roads on here, as I said, is a little bit different. And one thing I wanted to mention before I move on to a couple other sounds, just to briefly touch on them, is that the sustain up here is a lot less than on the MP11. I showed you down here on this B. It goes on and on. Up here, you can hear a huge difference there. Like, it's still there, but it dies way, way more quickly. Hear that? It falls. This one here soars and then gently dies out. This one here kind of like suddenly dies out and then just slowly trails off for a really long time. This one here, it sounds more like the real roads, which when you play it, it has a really long decay curve. This one here kind of suddenly drops down and then trails off into non-existence.
So that's kind of interesting. One of my favorite sounds on here is the sound of the Whirly, and it's absolutely fantastic. The uh, the MP11 has one too. I'm just going to briefly touch on this, um, but it, they sound really, really amazing down here. <laughs> However, I like the one on the Korg a lot more. That's with the amp on, and if I turn the amp off, it sounds even cooler. the sound of the whirly i don't know how accurate that is to the real thing maybe someday i'll get one but i've heard they're kind of undependable um but i really really love the sound of that and it just sounds more it sounds brighter and just cooler than on the mp11 something about it is a little bit different about the Korg one is just a little bit cooler in my opinion and I really really like it. There's also a different variant of it that has a chorus effect which I also really like. Oh, that one sounds really cool to me. So there's a couple of strange features here with the Korg SV1 that I wanted to touch on, and one of them is in the clavi category. So this is the category that has a bunch of clavinet sounds, this one extra one that's really fun. But number one here really bothers me and let me show you why so if we take the sound here of the clavi number one sound first of all you have a big dynamic range which i'm not sure the original ones did the ones on the mp11 do not have a very big dynamic range at all but on here they have a really big dynamic range check this out you can get really loud and also really 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 quietly and then play really loud. But if you had a sharp ear there, you might have heard something very strange. And that's that the pitch changes when I play the note louder. Check this out. Turn this up a little bit. You hear that? As I play the note louder, it gets a little bit higher in pitch. And here's something else crazy. If I hold the pedal down, I play a chord and let go of the note, the pitch changes as well. Watch this. I messed that up, so let me try that again. Hear that? It's really weird, and I don't know why that's a thing. I just wanted to mention that it is that it is a thing on the Korg SV1. Now something else that has been bugging me for a long time about the Korg SV1 is the additional sounds. Now what do I mean by additional sounds? Well I mean little things that Korg added into the sound to the sounds of the keyboard for realism. That would include key click noises, damper sounds, just little extraneous noises that the instruments may make. And the clavi number two has the worst example of that. And what's kind of interesting is if I take the amp sound and turn it the gain down to zero, it takes out the instrument sound, but leaves in these extraneous noises so you can really hear what they're all about. Listen to this. That's not all the keys of the instrument making that. Those are actually programmed in there to sound like, I guess, the mechanism of the clavinet falling down. It's all different on the notes and it just, ugh, I don't like it at all. So if I turn the clavinet back up here and I want to play something, this has got tape echo, let me get that off. You could hear that clacking was still in there and it's really audible. If I play that same thing down on here, You can hear that there's no clacking at all, and in my opinion, it sounds a lot better. So that's something that's very weird and very annoying about the Korg SV-1. Now, it's not limited to the clavy sounds. On the Rhodes, you also have um, similar sounds. They're not as bad, though. I really don't mind these. Turn that up a bit, and you can hear it more. 
and on the piano is very very annoying uh if you go and you press the pedal down you have damper sounds now, i've got a crank toy up so it's not normally this loud and honestly you don't hear it all that much but not only is it there but it's delayed when i push the pedal down it comes a little bit too late and it's annoying and then it also falls back down too now I know why Korg put these in there, it's to make the instrument sound a little bit more real. If you didn't have that damper sound, it would be missing something, and it would sound a little bit more artificial. So by putting that in there, they make it sound a little bit more realistic, but by not having these effects be toggleable or adjustable, they really annoy me. Now maybe I'm the only one, maybe I'm the only one in the whole world who dislikes these sounds, but I don't think that I am. I've never heard anyone complaining about them, but honestly, I really don't like these sounds. But let me leave off the video on a positive note with a couple more sounds that I really like. Just briefly going to touch on them. The uh, SV-1 has a really nice strings pad, and I really enjoy playing it. I haven't been able to use it in music yet, because it is kind of muddy sounding, but I really like the sound of it, and it's just fun to play with. It's a lot of fun to play with it, and I really like that low bass sound. It's really, really cool. There's also another one on here that sounds like a Mellotron, which is something somebody wanted me to review, and if I ever get the chance, I will. But this one, I think, is supposed to sound like the string sound of the Mellotron. That sounds kind of cool, I really like that one as well. Now on the MP11, you have a couple of fun sounds as well. You have a harpsichord. Which the S1 does not have, and you also have a Celesta sound, which is amazing. So both of these instruments do have their positive sides, but I just wanted to kind of give you an in-depth review of the things that I love about these instruments and the things that I dislike about the instruments, because they both have their little quirks and their really cool features that are absolutely amazing about these two instruments. And so I just kind of wanted to discuss that and give you guys an in-depth review, because someone asked me recently if I had an SV-1 and what my thoughts were on it, and someone also recently, someone else recently asked me what my thoughts were on the MP11, and if I owned one, and stuff like that, so I wanted to do a video on these, because I do own both of these, and I do love both of them very, very much. So as a final recap here about these instruments, like I said, both of them have their positives, but both of them also have their negatives. The, uh, the, the user interface on the Korg, I find is superior to that of the MP11. Uh, once you get used to where everything is, and you can remember it all, it's very natural, and you know exactly where to go, and what to do to turn stuff off. On the MP11, it's a little bit kind of weird, and you have to go, wait, how do I get to that thing? I go into here, and I do this and that, and it's a little bit less um, uh, nice. And the uh, the sounds on here are also very good, and what amazes me is that this model, this I've had this for about over a year and a half now, but the Korg SV-1 itself, the samples that are in here, are like 10 years old. And that's really saying something, because this still sounds good compared to an instrument made much later. I think this came out in 2015 or 16, I'm not sure. But the fact that 10-year-old samples still hold up well against 16, I mean, samples from 2016 on a relatively newer keyboard, that's quite impressive. And the piano sound sounds quite nice, it sounds great, and mixes and stuff. By itself, you can tell that it's a bit artificial, and I think the MP11 is a definite improvement. And I think the MP11, the road sound on it, is just a little bit more accurate, in my opinion, than that of the SV-1. But the SV-1 kind of has its own characteristic sound. When I listen to recordings online of the SV-1, I go, yeah, that's the SV-1 road sound. It just kind of has its own little sound that perhaps someday might become a desired sound in music. I do enjoy it, and while it is different than the Rhodes, I also think it's kind of cool as well. And then, of course, all the different features you have on here, like the drive and the, the amps and the effects and things like that, which I didn't really get into much at all. But this the SV-1 does have a lot of cool features, and so does the MP-11. There were a couple of things I wanted to mention about, and I forgot what they were. A couple, two funny things about both of these. 
One of them was the fact that this one says goodbye when you shut it off. And there was another one on this that I don't remember what it was. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it was. Hmm. Okay. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this in-depth look and comparison between the MP11 and the Korg SD1. Two really, really great keyboards that I'm very happy that I own and I absolutely love the feel of both of these instruments as well as the sound and just the quality of both of them. They've seemed to be very, very dependable. If one of them breaks, I might do a video on it and say, hey, I broke my SV1. I don't know, maybe I won't. But I just wanted to say that both of these have been quite reliable for me as well. I've played very hard on these for quite some time. I've had this for, like I said, over a year and a half. This one here, I've only had it for a few months, but I have played very, very hard, and I have practiced a lot on this instrument, and um, it it's held up fine, and I've had no issues with either of these. Both of them are in perfect working working order, and as far as, and, you know, aside from the little weird things about both of them that I dislike, aside from those, I'm extremely happy with both of these keyboards, and I love them a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you want, you can go check out my channel and uh, see all the other reviews. I've done a review solely on the MP11. I go through a little bit more about some of the sounds and features on this one. And uh, I also did a review a long time ago about the Korg SD1 when I first got it. So that might be interesting for me to watch to see what I said about it then and what I say about it now. I have no idea. But if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and give the video a like. And if you want, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future uploads. You might be interested in that one where I get a real Rhodes and compare it against these two keyboards. I also have a stage model Rhodes that I might include in that mix as well. It has a little bit of a different sound, but I might include that in there as well. So that would be interesting for you guys to go check out if you wanted to. So if you want to, make sure to hit the uh, notification bell if you subscribe to be notified of all my future uploads. And if you do all that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.